Uh, this session is about metadata. Um, my name uh, my name is Chema Alonso. He's uh, Jose Palazon, Palaco. Uh, we are from Spain. I'm working in a small security company in Spain. I'm, I'm also a Microsoft MVP, but I don't work for Microsoft. It's just an award that Microsoft gives to some technician around the world. And uh, he is working for Yahoo. He is working as a security engineer. And today's session is about uh, metadata. We are going to use metadata hidden info to recognize the network infrastructure of a company. Uh, and we are going to use, uh, to do this, um, a tool. Uh, this tool is free and you can download it from the internet just after finishing the, the talk or just during the talk. So if you are rushed, you can download the tool and go away. So it's easy. Well, uh, probably mostly of you uh, are aware about metadata and metadata security problems because in 2003 there was a hot topic in the news. In 2003 uh, the Iraq war was about to start and the United States wanted to, the United Kingdom to be an ally. Um, to, uh, to obtain this help the state sent a document to the United Kingdom in which this document proves that in Iraq was massive destruction weapons. Do you remember this story? Hands up? Yeah. Well, uh, when Tony Blair presented the document to the United Kingdom Parliament, uh, the, the Parliament asked to Tony Blair if someone had modified this document, and Tony Blair, of course, said no. Nothing from my team, no, no one from my team had been editing, modifying, or translating, cutting, and so on, uh, this document. But um, in the end, the story uh, told us that someone had been working with this document in the United Kingdom and more than three people uh, had been working with the document. So it was a very big scandal uh, because, uh, because they had lied to the parliament. Do you remember that story? Yeah? Well, in the end, someone uh, had to, find, to sign his demission and it was uh, a very big problem. This is the end of the story because after happening this, everybody is, is aware of the metadata and nobody is publishing document before, without cleaning, cleaning the document before. Or nobody is sending an attachment with a PDF or doc file or XML file without cleaning it before. How many of you have sent a document the last week without cleaning it before? The rest of you have been cleaning the documents or now, or, <laughs> or just don't send email from here. <laughs> well, let's see the story. Okay, so, so far everybody that has been talking about metadata has been talking about this kind of data that you can usually go to the uh, properties dialog and then you go and see the, who created the document, who has, uh, which company is the document for. But we want to talk about some more information that is there and should definitely not be there when you're publishing the document. We call some of this information, we call that hidden information, is kind of metadata, but you can actually, you cannot actually edit. Like, what is the template that you use when you created the document for the first time? What is your printer? Even if you, are not, if you, even if you never printed the document, your printer information is going to be there. What is your database structure? Like if you do this combine mail or however it's, it's called, your, the tables and the columns that you use in the, on the database to create those documents are going to be in this hidden information. Um, and there's also a lot of information there that you don't know that it's there. Like you copy and paste something and then you're copying something that you don't know that you're copying or the typical uh, text is the same color as the background. Like, Stupid things like that. Go ahead. And we want to treat all these three kinds of information the same because at the end of the day, metadata, lost data, and hidden information can become one the other. Like uh, metadata can become lost data uh, if the if the programs don't do the things the right way. Like for example, when you have a doc document and you want to export that document as, as a PDF document, some of the metadata is actually going to become information on the PDF document itself, not on the metadata of the PDF document. It's going to be attached at the bottom, actually, and you probably won't notice that this information is there. If you publish this, this document, everybody will be able to see that. Um, when you have uh, information on, the, on your document and you publish this document, search engines are going to index this information, and they usually need to have like a title for the result 
or some of them are getting more information like what is the file type or what is the author, and they are inferring this information sometimes from metadata, but sometimes like, for example, a TXT file doesn't have a title, but Google is going to tell you a title in the result. Sometimes this title is going to be the first line of the uh, TXT or something in the footer. If that first, uh, first line or that footer, you didn't know the information that was there, that can be kind of a problem and it's going to be indexed. Um, when you have one file and you embed this file into another file, you go to the uh, parent uh, file, go to properties, and you will see the metadata of this uh, uh, document. But you have an embed document there that has metadata that you cannot edit. So this metadata is becoming hidden info, and so on. All this information can, like, uh, if you have information that you couldn't edit before, and then a new version of your application let you modify this information, you, we, you can say that that hidden information is becoming metadata. So. All of all these uh, three kinds of information are at the end of the day the same. Um, um, this is an example of how, from a TXT file, you can see the author. Google did this. Not the, the author of this file didn't did this. Google just parsed the document and decided that DT Rie is the author of this file. So you can see here how lost information has become metadata for the for the engine. This is a very funny one. This, uh, there is this publishing company. Uh, they have like th uh, hundreds of uh, books really, uh, on, say, on security topics. And there's a, there's a quite uh, cool functionality on the website because if you buy one of the books, you just go to the second page. There's this table with codes. So you go to a form in the website, and with this code, you can download the PDF so you can get the electronic. They are selling the books on Amazon, and Amazon has this look inside. And look inside is going to give you a random chapter and also the first pages of the books. So you just have to go to Amazon, get the look inside, look at the second page, go to the site, enter the code, which is actually always stop, the second. Stop. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, more, more examples, like on the left side, you have a document. Novel? Yeah, the, these two are from Novel. You have a link, and the link is actually pointing to C, C uh, backslash document, blah, and that's a username. So it's, not only, it's, it's giving, giving information from someone that was just downloading the, the document from home about the username of the, of, the, of the box. I really like this one on the right side. This guy was uh, copying some script from one of his uh, servers, and then <coughs> when he pasted it on OpenOffice, uh, OpenOffice recognizes the format of a URL and then automatically creates a link. So the guy sees it and there was an IP there. He goes, removes the IP, and he puts this IP underscore ZLM. But he didn't go to actually edit the link. So if you, uh, if you uh, do the on mouse over on the link or you actually click the link, this is an IP. Uh, in this case, this is actually an IP that you can access. And you can see here more information. Yeah, this is started with metadata, but following the link, you can see that he's using Apache on win to, win, Windows. Yeah, Windows and Apache. I think this is part of the novel Microsoft agreement, maybe. Yeah. So. Well, the question is, are people aware of this? And the answer is no. Even after what, happening, what happens with Tony Blair, people is, uh, are not taking care about metadata, hidden info, and lost data. And it's funny because you can extract a lot of information from, from the network infrastructure uh, from big companies, software companies, and even security companies. So uh, just as a couple of examples, we are going to look into the FBI files. This is a government uh, organization, and they should take care about uh, its, uh, their documents. If, you, if we look for Office document into Google, we can mm, we can obtain more than 4,000 documents. If we are able to extract one metadata, one internal data from each file, we are going to obtain a lot of information, a lot of data from the internal network, and this uh, this can be very bad for this website. So we are going to use FOCA, but we are going to to use it later in an advanced mode. Now, just a quick introduction. FOCA friends, friends FOCA. And <laughs> we are going to analyze uh, a document from the FBI. It's an Excel document. It's, this document is in this URL. You can download it. You can download it, all the documents using FOCA, of course. 
and we are going to analyze this document. Just, just drag and drop, extract metadata, and look the info that we got inside. With only one file, we can discover a lot of information. Two users, a printer, which is uh, shared in a network server. This is an internal server, so we know that this user has access to this server, so we can create the ACL of this, uh, this network. We discover an internal domain, which is not published. We discover the email account, the operating system, which is running on... <laughs> This is only from one single file. So let's see what happened in the end when we analyze 4,000 documents. <laughs> so is there any lawyer here that can tell us if downloading something from the web and looking inside is illegal in the US? No, in, in our country, this is not a crime. And remember, if something happened, my name is <laughs> Jose. <laughs> No. <laughs> well, remember, my name is Fermin. Fermin. <laughs> well, this is Missile Defense Agency. Uh, this is the people who is taking care about the missiles. They are publishing 1,000 documents, and we can analyze one of these documents quickly. So let's see what they have. Missile. This is another Excel file. Drag and drop extract metadata, and you can discover, well, a user, an internal server, the operating system, the Windows server, and so on. But only from one single file. So the question arises when you are sitting in front of us asking, oh my god, how many files is my company publishing? Are clean these documents? Well, probably not, because nobody is taking care about this. And another big misconception is that only Microsoft Office documents store metadata, and this is not true, because all the uh, Office files store metadata, hidden info, and lost data. So, so as, as, we saw, as we saw with the Tony Blair example, with metadata, you can get screwed up in many ways. But we want to talk about fingerprinting, uh, network fingerprinting, actually, using metadata. So this, this listing here is just a random search for open office documents. We grab for some printers. We could have grab for templates or some other files, uh, some, some other stuff inside the, the document. But just looking at the uh, printers, let's see how many different stuff can we do here. Because what we, are, what we are doing here with metadata is actually using the information. Um, first thing that you can see is IPs. Uh, again, this is downloaded from the web, but the IPs that you, can ha that you have here are the in internal IPs of the network. Uh, you, have, you have here the example that this, this doesn't happen only to small companies, also happen to big companies like Sun, Novel. And then more stuff that you can see here is like different names that uh, sysadmins are going to uh, give to servers, like, just a second. If you see there something like SRV2, there's probably a, an SRV1. So again, it is started with metadata, and from this data, I'm going to use my tools to go get some more information. There's another one there, which is uh, How many of you do that in your company? Server one, server two, how many of you do that? So hands, so many? What? There are another kind of system administrator. Show your hands if you have a Mordor server. Darth Star, Luke, Leia, Han Solo, Chewbacca. <laughs> Come on, so show your hands. Words. Don't be shy. So as words, if you do something like this, no? Okay, so actually, uh, so doing this, there is this technique at, which is called DNS uh, prediction using Google. And there is this guy who presented this paper, it's Johnny Long who said that you can go use Google Sets, which is a tool that, as an input, takes a term, and as an output, gives you a list of related terms. So with a tool like this, you can go and try to get other names. So you go to the subdomain of the server that you want, and then try other subdomains. We included this functionality on the FOCA, and then actually this is for the Sun Microsystem uh, example. There was a poland.sun.com, and then FOCA went through this list and discovered slovenia.sun.com. So you can do stuff like that. 
Uh, this is another sample of how, starting with metadata, you download this from the web, and you see that in the metadata there is a username there. I mean, there, there's a URL there with a server name. There's some more information about the uh, PDF. So you go take that piece of information, make another Google search, and then you get some funny message, error messages and that stuff. And you discover another uh, server name. You ping that server name. This was from an American Express uh, example. And then you see that you, I mean, you didn't know anything about the organization before. Maybe they are not use, maybe they are not even hosting the files inside their network. They are hosting in a third party. But you now know information about the network, and you can actually ping it and access this information. Well, in the end, all kind of files store metadata. You can extract in metadata and hidden info from Microsoft Office documents, of course, but also from Open Office documents, from PDF, from EPS, from graphic documents, in looking into the XMP or EXIF information, and almost everything. In this example, this is a picture with GPS data, but in a EXIF, in an EXIF. Uh, um, and a picture with exif information, you can discover the mobile, the device with which this picture has been taken, or the data, the software using this mobile to uh, create the, the picture, and even the data when the picture is taken. This is quite funny because two months ago, a girl sent me a picture and I say, oh, you look great. And she said, thank you. And I say, how old is this picture? And she said to me, oh, only two months. And the picture had been taken in 2006. So it's, <laughs> it's true, it's true. Well, uh, also when you have uh, pictures embedded in in Office uh, files, you can access to this information. If you are using FOCA, FOCA is going to extract all the images and look for the EXIF information. In this example, we are going to use a, a file from Nobel. Nobel is our friend. And just drag and drop, extract metadata, and look into the picture, the file, and you can uh, access to the EXIF information, and in this example, you can see how this picture is copyright by Jonathan Story, but no problem because for sure Nobel has the license to use this picture in this presentation. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but you can uh, find metadata in also in videos. In this example, it's a video in which it's possible to discover the username of the speaker or in. A printed TXT is quite funny because almost everything, all the documents printed from Notepad uh, print the, in the footer the path from which uh, this document was printed. And in this case, this is a real example with a girl. This is the, his username. So you can find metadata around you. Yeah, every, you can find metadata on the toilet after you use it this morning. <laughs> Go ahead, please. <laughs> so what, what can we found in, in metadata? The, as, as I've said a couple of times so far, the point of our presentation is to get this, this, all this information to make some fingerprinting of the network. So we are, you, we are interested in users and getting who created the user, who, modifi who created the document, who modified the document. Uh, there is going to be, as we've, said, as we've seen before, uh, something in the path that is also the username. So we have plenty of information about the users of the internal network on the documents. We have operating systems, we have printers, uh, both local printers, remote print printers. From the path, we have a lot of information to um, internet servers, NetBIOS servers. We, can, we know the protocols that they are using for printing and for sharing files. We do things like if something is like slash slash or backslash backslash name of something slash whatever, the tool is going to semantically analyze that path and that's inf that information to know what, what in this path might be a server and then try stuff. Uh, as we said before, database structures, uh, device information from pictures, all, all that stuff that we send. Um, how can you extract this metadata? Well, just looking into it. Most of the time, it's either strings. Sometimes it's binary. And binary, you can just open an hexadecimal editor and then see the raw hexadecimal. Uh, you have a couple of examples there, like Xedit or Bintex. Or you can use some special tools that have been created so far. 
to read the information, like exif readers for uh, images, or lib extractor, which is a tool that will take Office documents and read the information there, or this uh, other, uh, that, like this is a screenshot of lib extractor. It's taking a doc document, and you can see the history of the document there, some users, that stuff. Uh, you can use MetaGoodField too, which is a tool that is actually going to take the domain, go into Google, get all the information, download it, use LibExtractor, and then present you with that, with that information. This tool is being created for another uh, Spanish guy, so it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you don't need even uh, a tool. You can do, uh, just use Google, because as Palaco told at the beginning of the presentation, Google has his own, metada his own metadata. So we can discover uh, an FBI user just looking into Google for something like this, looking into detail for the word, the doc uh, documents, and you can see uh, the users. Emmett Reniac, Callaway, your user from the United Nations, your user from the Scotland Yard, your user from the Carabinieri, remember no, um, not American cars in Italy, and of course your user from the White House. So. No, no, you have to be kidding me. No, no, can, no, it's true. Can we get the user from the White House? Yes, we can, of course. <laughs> <laughs> So the problem with the tools that existed so far is that first they only extracted metadata, they and they didn't they didn't do it well. They they left a lot of metadata there that they didn't show. And they <coughs> absolutely didn't look at the other kinds of information that we've been telling so far, and they didn't do anything with the information. They just say this is the information, this is what we found there. So you do your stuff. So and doing that with four thousand files is a tough task. So this is an example of how you can take an Excel file, you use the lib extractor tool, and you get there like one couple of users, the software that was used, and that's it. With our tool, you get an email, internal email, a printer, some more stuff that wasn't there. So we just created a tool that looks at absolutely every meta metadata that you can find. Another example, because lib extractor is not very good either with XML files, and most of the latest formats for documents, Office documents, is, are XML. So there's almost anything there in this file being analyzed and a lot of information with the tool that we created. Uh, this is another very good thing that our tool has. and. Uh, the point is that the, the tool that I mentioned before is going to Google and it's going to download uh, documents, office documents, PDF docu documents, and for that he's going to do the file type column PDF, file type column whatever. Problem is that Google implementations for this is wrong, for this is wrong because what they are actually looking at is the extension. So if you have one servlet or PHP script or something that is reading the file from the disk to serve it, the extension of the script is going to be .do or .php, but the file itself is going to be PHP. The thing is that Google knows it, because if you look at the screen on the left side, they know there is a PDF file. But if you're just looking for file type PDF, they won't show you these kind of files. So we decided to use both Bing and, and Google for doing this search. And if you do examples of this, you will get like, I think we have a screenshot. Uh, you have 67, next, next. If you, if you see there, just using Google, you have 63 documents, and, if, and you discover nine kinds of software. Same domain you use Bing, you have 87 documents use, uh, dis uh, discovering 10 kinds of software, so you combine both, you have much better results. So, <coughs> uh, joining all this uh, stuff, we, we got FOCA. FOCA is a tool that is going to collect all the, all the files from the, from the internet, it's going to download automatically, it's going to extract all the metadata, hidden info and lost data, and after doing this, it's going to cluster the information and create a more or less uh, occurrence uh, map of the network. So let's see this working, and we are, do it, we are going to do it with the Missile Defense Agency, for instance. So this is quite simple, the project name, the domain, and the folder to store the files. And once you do this, the tool is going to look for doc 
for Office, Office 2007 uh, documents, Open Office, a PDF, and also Word Perfect documents because it was great. <laughs> and of course, if you don't want it, you, don't, you can uh, you want to customize your ch search join, joining more than one domain. You can type your comments here. And if you are working on a network share, you just can drag and drop, and all the files will be here. So extract all metadata, and the tool is going to analyze all this document. If you are working on an inter intranet with a um, document uh, management system, such as SharePoint or whatever, this tool could be very dangerous because that document store a lot of information. It can be, uh, and, at, and anyone who is doing this tool can access to a lot of information. Well, the tool is going to create a leak with the users. This is the users of the Missile Defense Agency. <laughs> well, you can extract, export all these, uh, all these users to a, a file, and which is good because you, will, you can create a dictionary to attack some login page or whatever. Who knows? The folders. The folders with the internal servers, software, emails, you can <laughs> drop a line to, to them. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can uh, join all this information and just click in, in Analyze Metadata. The FOCA is going to cluster all this information and draw the map of the network, more or less. It's not, the, it's not exactly the map, but more or less. And you got the operating system. This is the, the list of uh, personal computers. And in the end, you got the servers. And you can look for another server. This is the headquarters. <laughs> it's enough. <laughs> uh. You can do the same with the FBI, for instance. <laughs> In this example, we, we analyzed more than 3,000 documents, and no. So it's, for you, for those It's not you, a crime, <laughs> it's public. <laughs> we read documents, public documents, but in other yeah. ways. So. For, for, <laughs> for those of you, of you that are penetration testers, you know that to get to something similar to this, you have to first get access to the network, and then you have to maybe find some SNMP net, uh, server with a public key for community. You will get something similar to this, like users, <coughs> printers, uh, okay. all this that stuff. And this is just a Google search and a Bing search so from home. So. Well, you got a lot of information. You can see uh, which uh, the information about this computer, for instance, the users, and the document used to infer the, this computer. And you can, of course, track in the documents and find out which software is using. In this example, is Quart. I suppose they got the license, <laughs> and so on. Well, you, you can do the same with Nobel, Missile, Sun, well, a lot of places. Well, it's enough. Go back. Uh, there is also a. Um, uh, an online version, but it's only for one file. But in this URL, you can download the, this tool. FOCA is free, so you can download it from this URL and start it to, to play with it just today. Um, how to fix this problem with metadata? Uh, ask. <laughs> Ask your users to clean the documents because before publishing them is what you have to do, or get some uh, low-cost engineer <laughs> to clean the documents, get some intern. Uh, <laughs> There's a couple of solutions to go one by one cleaning your documents. If you're using Microsoft Office 2007, there is this kind of inspector. So you go to the properties, run the inspector, and then it will tell uh, this thing here, this thing here, this thing here, this shouldn't be there if you want to publish the document. So do you want me to remove it? It's so better if, if Microsoft Office 2007 is in Spanish. 
So you have the option, and then you remove this information. If you are using 2003 version, you need to have this add-in, which is, which is called remove hidden data, and it's going to do pretty much the same. The problem is that it's not doing it quite well. It is actually removing a lot of information, but it's not removing all the information. This is a cool example to see how, how metadata, you cannot leave anything there. In this case, the OLE streams that, the, that Microsoft Office is using, if you see the structure there, there is just two bytes of information with a small number of them. And then we created the tool on the right, the, the table on the right, to identify, to map operating systems to version, uh, operating systems and, and software, including versions, to those two little numbers. So even if you are running the inspector or the plugin, Microsoft Office is going to get uh, to leave those bytes there, those little two bytes there, and then we will just read those numbers and get the information. So we have a demo for these two. Yep, we are going to create a new project, new project, and we are going to use, for instance, this document, this this one is a, a binary office uh, document, and we are going to drag and drop to the FOCA, FOCA rules, extract metadata, and we got a lot of information. In this case, this document is being created with Office XP from Windows XP, and we got two users from Noble. <laughs> okay. So now we are going to clean this document with Office 2007. And um, before to do this, we are going to create a copy. And then we are going to use Office 2007. So we are going to inspect the document. And Office 2007 is going to tell us that there are personal information stored in it, hidden info. So we are going to remove all the information, inspect again, and everything is, is clean, so it's perfect. So now we are going to save the document, close it, and drag and drop it to the FOCA. So now in the FOCA, we are going to analyze this document, and as you can see, now, actually, it's possible to discover that this document is being manipulated with Windows Vista, which is my operating system, and with the Microsoft Office. So it's good, but it's not perfect that you can uh, still recognize the operating system uh, from the user. So. Go, go, go. The same happens with open Office documents. They include an option to clean the document, and I'm, I'm not sure if I should say that they do it right or wrong, because what they do, I don't really understand. I think that they remove the information that was there, but then they put the information of the open office that you're using to remove the other information. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't really get it. So just go ahead. I think we have a, a demo of this, hmm. too. Oh, oh, sure. So we, we created this uh, OO Metastructure tool, which actually do, does it right. Uh, this is free, uh, it's at CodePlex, you can download it and use it. So we have a demo of how the tool works. And it is in Spanish because in Spanish it's better. <laughs> <laughs> so. But you're welcome to translate it. <laughs> and to port it to something that is not Windows. So, uh, uh, ah, I'm here. So now we are going to do the same, but we are going to Analyze this document. This this document is from Nobel. So first of all, let's analyze the metadata stored in it with FOCA. So extract metadata, and as you can see, this document is a poem with a lot of information: servers, user, paths, mails, and it's been created with Windows uh, 32 using an open office 2.3 um, and that's all so now we are going to use the open office uh, to clean all the the personal information from this file to do this we are going to do, 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 open the document open the document okay it has macros so now we are going to tools Options, 
security, it's in Spanish, but I'm in translation, <laughs> options. <laughs> and there is an option which is select to remove all, all personal information when saving. So <clears throat> which we are going to do is just accept and save the document with another name. Copy. Copy. OK. So now we are going to analyze this new file with FOCA. This one with FOCA, drag and drop, document is here, extract metadata. And it's, ki it's quite strange because now the information is uh, that this uh, document is being, uh, has been um, edited with a uh, Win32 and my machine is uh, 64 byte bits. I don't know why, but it's my open office version. And of course, this is my printer. So it's, it's a mix between the old information and the new information. So in order to, so to fix this, we create OO meta stricter. So drag and drop the file. Now metadata, delete, delete metadata. And if we analyze this document right now, with FOCA, we are going to obtain nothing, which is good. <clears throat> so it's quite simple. You only have to give this tool to your users, and <laughs> they will go through the 5,000 documents, remove everything. Back. Okay, that's all, and you will fire it in one month, more or less. <laughs> well, you cannot uh, trust your user, and if you don't trust in your user, you can use a special tool. Uh, this is a tool for IIS. This tool is a plugin which is going to delay all metadata uh, from documents before sending to the client, but the original remain the same, so it's just to protect the, the files in, uh, in your website. and. You can use another option. Uh, after cleaning all the documents, you have to beg Google to delete all documents cached because, because document uh, store uh, all documents in its servers. So first of all, you have to clean your documents, take it off from your website, then go Google and using the webmaster tool set say, please, Google, delay this file because it has my printer server, it has my user account, please delete it. And of course, don't trust your users. <laughs> Try to, <laughs> because if not, you are going to be working on your system using your platform. It can be Linux or Windows or whatever. <laughs> and your user is going, are going to pay attention or not. <laughs> It's a tough task to clean all documents, but don't complain about your job because there are, of course, worse jobs in the world. So <laughs> working security is not that bad, so don't complain. And of course, if any of you is wondering if this presentation has metadata, of course, it is full of metadata. This is the metadata of this PPT. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.